Welcome back from the break. Now we're ready to jump in and talk about more applications related to this course. That means energy management of hybrid electric vehicles. Recapitulating where we were was that we talked about traditional optimization where we had finite dimensional decision variables. Then we went to optimal control where we get an infinite dimensional optimal control problem and where we have a differential equation that's the core at the constraint because we cannot make controllers that doesn't obey the differential equation rules that we have set up. For example, Newton's mechanics that's governing the vehicle motion equation. And then we jumped into the deterministic dynamic programming where we learned about the discretization method that can be used to solve optimal control problems of low dimension very efficiently. And that's what we will use now in hand in task number two. We'll go through the provided tools and now we'll look at some case studies. The task is to do energy management of two different hybrids. And in the energy management, we will optimize the fuel consumption of these two hybrids over different driving cycles using deterministic dynamic programming. And the two hybrids will be a parallel hybrid and a series hybrid. And the parallel hybrid has one degree of freedom where the state of charge is the main control variable that we're using to control the electric machine so that we can place the engine in favorable operating points. And the engine speed in this case is given by the cycle. We don't have a freedom to change the engine speed. While in the series hybrid, we have once again, the state of charge is what we're utilizing to get the cycle driven. And then we're filling up the battery from the combustion engine. So that one is used to charge the battery so that we can get one degree of freedom. We can select the engine speed freely and hopefully we can select better operating points. In the analysis of the task, you will look at the different advantages and disadvantages of these two concepts. The provided tools for your hand in and your goals are to investigate optimal control of one parallel and one series hybrid configuration in different driving profiles. You have a set of MATLAB functions provided. There's a skeleton file that defines the problem. Then there are two DDP solvers, one one-dimensional and one two-dimensional. The one-dimensional is suitable for the parallel hybrid, while the two-dimensional is suitable for the series hybrid. Then there are two skeleton files for calculating the arc costs for the parallel and the serial hybrids. So you will solve the problems, you will analyze the solutions and see if they are generalizable. So the learning goals with the hand in assignment is to get knowledge about operation modes of different hybrid topologies. You'll get more experience in modeling of hybrid electric vehicles by building models for electric machines, batteries, combustion engines, and using these for optimization. In the process, you will also get experience from working and solving an optimal control problem. And you will also see the benefits of different hybrid topologies to see that there are opportunities in getting a good fuel consumption. Coming to the tools, the problem setup is done in the script test hybrids that sets up the problem and then it calls this dynamic programming 1D. And this one is given, this one you will not do any changes in. And then your main implementation task is here in this empty spot. This is where you will implement your complete vehicle model. And using that vehicle model, you will do computations for the fuel economy. And finally, you will check that it fulfills the constraints. Then you will return that information to this dynamic programming skeleton that will ask you for the next one. So your task will be to implement this function that calculates the arc bundles and returns the arc bundle costs to this one. And this one will keep track and build up the solution. So if you go here, you will fill this in to start up, set up the problem, set up what cycle to test. And then you will call, shall we look at the parallel hybrid or shall we look at the series hybrid? Uh, and then depending on if it's a parallel hybrid, you call dynamic programming 1D. And if it's a serial hybrid, you call dynamic programming 2D. The next part is the implementation task here. And you have this black area, which, uh, which you might jokingly say that uh, this is a black hole that can suck in a lot of your time. Finally, when you have done it uh, and uh, this DDP solver has returned the solution, your analysis 
tasks start here where you will unwind the solution and look at the properties and see what happened during the um, process. What was the optimal behavior of the energy management strategies? How does an optimal energy management strategy behave and how does it control the state of charge in the battery? So to summarize, the main part is here to implement the vehicle model and the constraints and send a bundle of arc costs up here. And then when you're finished, you will do the unwinding on the present the solution you got from the DDP solver here. So here's an illustration of um, a certain point in the solution procedure. We have started from the end. We say that the state of charge should be at least 50% when we come to the end. So below here is uh, not viable solutions, but above it's okay to be. So we have propagated to here and we're standing at this point. And then you cannot see it clearly, but there are a good sequence of arrows leading up to all the different points. So at this point, the function in the middle, the dynamic programming 1D is asking you to calculate the costs for all these arcs so that the dynamic programming 1D can make the decision which one is the best solution. And when it has done that, it stores that solution here, which was this one. And then you get the task to compute the next one, which is this one up here. You return it, it stores the best solution, and then it continues. Calculate all the arc costs, store, calculate more arc costs, store, arc cost, 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 store, arc, arc cost, store. This procedure continues until the end. But the main thing I want you to notice is that your main task is to calculate all these arcs that are visible here in the plot so that the solver can build up these optimal paths that you are working with. So. We will now look at an animation that constructs the complete solution over time. It is propagating, it is going um, backwards and you can follow it both with the dot that shows the current time and you can see how the solver uh, propagates and tries to find solutions. And it just propagates to the end. Your main task here was to calculate this bundle of arcs, which is essentially a vector for the parallel hybrid case. But when we come to the series hybrid, it will become a matrix. So to illustrate this situation, I've done this sketch where like previously, we have done some calculations where we have been propagating back a time. We know what the solution is here and we know what the solution is here. So we're standing in this point and we're wondering how should we go to the end so that we get the lowest fuel consumption and then it knows that it has to test all these arcs that are represented by a matrix. So your task with the series hybrid is to calculate this two dimensional bundle of arcs. So you will develop for the series hybrid a function that calculates all arc costs as a 2D matrix. Once again, since it's MATLAB, it's beneficial if you use matrix computations and don't use for loops to do the computations. At this point, you have developed the function that calculates the costs and you have received the results from the optimizer. And the results that are stored in the optimizer is this sequence of actions. The next point then is to look at, we're starting at 50% state of charge and we want to go to 50% state of charge. And then we can just follow these lines here. It's possible to get the solution by following that. And that is what you will do. You will unwind the solution and you will analyze what happens. To do this unwinding, you can look at the following animation where we are just propagating and we're following from the beginning to the end, the best path work will then be to unwind the solutions. You extract the information from the data structure and you see what control actions there were and what happened over the cycle. In this case, we have actually taken a two sparse grid. You can see, you can see some things that are natural 
but you will see later that more things can happen. Here you see that the state of charge goes up, that's regenerative breaking. And once again here the state of charge goes up and that's also regenerative breaking. And here you can see that some points go down, so for example, if we are up here and you see the lines that go down, that means that we are using electrical energy to propel the vehicle. While we're going up it's using regenerative braking or as it's in this case we're going up here because we are at a low state of charge and we want to increase the state of charge. So we're using the combustion engine to go up in this region. Here we can see actions that leads to that we at the end will end up in a good point here. If we have very high state of charge very late uh, we might end up at a higher state of charge. This illustration shows another thing and that, that the cost to go and the solution that we have is a feedback solution. Suppose we started here but something happened when we came here so that um, for example we had to stand still in a line and uh, use the air conditioner so the state of charge dropped so we came here and then we have from this solution actually another path that's slightly modified but that will bring us back to our desired point at the end. So the combination of the cost to go and the stored control actions become a feedback control solution that will lead us back to the optimal point. Unless we're starting down here because then there is no way of getting up to 50% state of charge because it would require too much current so the battery limitations would kick in and we couldn't get up here. Let's look at another solution where we have uh, made a much finer discretization and here you see uh, much more details in how the solution behaves. So comparing these two solutions with each other, we know now that the DDP guarantees a global solution but only within the discretization. So more accurate discretizations might be needed to see the details in a solution. And this is illustrated here. So here we have a sparse solution and here we have a dense solution. And the density can also be seen that this starts at 0.49 and ends just above 0.5. And 0.49 is here and just about 0.5 is here. So if we would have them at the same scale, uh, this would we wouldn't be able to see individual lines. It would be more colors in the graph. So what we're seeing in the solution here with more details is that the colors here, the lighter red you have, the more combustion engine usage we have, the more fuel usage there is. The green ones here are using mainly electric drive and then the green zones here, yeah, we have four bright green zones, this, this, this and this. In all these cases we are at standstill where we have turned the engine off so that we are avoiding idling losses. Then the darker green shades here is where we are utilizing regenerative braking so that we recover energy from the vehicle and place it into the battery. And that can also be seen that you have lines going up here, like you had here. So in this sparse, we can see a little bit of regenerative braking benefit, more of regenerative braking. Anyway, the discretization needs to be considered when you find the solution and you will work with it. So I will come back to it, but you initially start with a coarse discretization to see that you seem to get the results you need and then you make it finer and finer until you are satisfied. So here we have the unwinded solution with the higher accuracy. And you can see that it has significant difference from the previous solution that was shown in the video. In the next slide we will look at this solution together with the sparsest one and with solutions that have even higher resolution for the state of charge. Here we have three different cases where we have run the simulation. You see this is accumulated fuel and this is the state of charge trajectory that we got. And the blue one is the sparse solution for a slightly different problem than the previous but you can see with the sparse solution we get some strange behaviors but 
discharge, do a regenerative braking, discharge during acceleration, regenerative braking, discharge, regenerative braking. But when we do it with a much finer discretization, we get access to much uh, smaller changes in the state of charge that is used uh, to optimize the fuel consumption. So here we have run it with per mil change in the state of charge, and here we have uh, 0.1 per mil and 0.01 per mil change in the state of charge. And the mass of fuel is with the course discretization higher and then with more and more fine tuning we get better and better fuel consumption because we can find smaller and smaller adjustments that make improvements. The time for solution this is uh, solving it straight, o- straight off starts with taking half a second it takes nine seconds and then it takes 800 seconds and it should be about 100 factor between these it should perhaps have been here also but this problem is so easy to solve so that you get a lot of overhead from the function calls etc there's a factor of 10 in terms of number of discretization points in between the different solutions this is the same thing, but where we have used parallel computing. So we have distributed the task of solving the problem to different cores. And the interesting thing here is that the two first ones where the problem is fairly simple to solve, the overhead of having to send information between the cores in the computer doesn't give any benefit. While this one that was 800, it worked quite nicely, so we end up with... 71 seconds instead of 800 seconds and this one takes 232 seconds in this case it would have taken 80,000 seconds which is about 22 hours to solve if we took it uh, if we use this uh, implementation but with the parallel processing we get that time down to 232 seconds which is a significant improvement anyway the main issue that I want you to see is that we have the different solutions for different discretization levels and you see that it converges. The last two here are more or less on top of each other, both in the state of charge and in the fuel consumption. All three are more or less on top of each other up in the fuel consumption plots. This shows the challenge uh, that uh, finer discretization takes more time. So. It's important to solve the right problem or the problem with the right complexity. So coming to your implementation task, the process of constructing a solution and analysis of the complexity. Consider a two-dimensional problem that has number of X and number of Y uh, grids. When we're evaluating what happens here, we are evaluating uh, NX times NY points. And for each of these points, we're evaluating NX times and why potential candidates so the resulting complexity becomes proportional to the computational time of each iteration times the number of time steps we're having times nx squared and ny squared so it is quadratic in each dimension and linear in time and if we increase the dimension and look at the dimension so we say that each dimension has n points and then we just increase the dimensions we get this uh, nasty exponential curse of dimensionality so um, the dynamic programming is not well suited for problems of high dimensions but very nice if we have low dimension and also long horizons so general advice to approach the problem here work with arc costs uh, and debug the arc costs you will have some help in the first part, the first part of the hand in assignment will be um, just a checkup that you have managed to get the arc costs correct. Then later you will do the unwinding and you will do the analysis. Then later you will solve the full problem and you will do the unwinding analysis. The most important device is to use MATLAB matrix computations because it keeps your computational time down and you start with a smaller problem to learn about and see if it's working so absolute first is just to see does the arc calculation work as intended then you test for example on this first bump here and see does this give you results that you're expecting when you're convinced that you have the solution ready then you increase the problem size and level of detail the expected computation time for your series hybrid 
is about one hour or maybe a little bit more depending on your implementation. So this shows that you cannot sit and iterate start one then you would have to wait one hour until you see that oh there was an error that will take a lot of time so work with smaller problems and increase the size and also if you start with a two sparse grid then you might get problems with artifacts of the solution rather than getting a solution that looks like you expect like we had here with the blue curves that are not expected solutions the other ones look more like what i would expect from such a system where we have driving with electricity and regenerative braking then driving with electricity generative braking electricity and a little bit extra charging and then we come up here with the final regenerative braking finally some examples we have the parallel hybrid example here the graphs come from eta co-workers of those who develop the book and this is the city cycle as you can see these agree well with what you saw from the plots that have been shown earlier and this is the control action for the full european cycle and with that i have given you the tools that you need for the hand in task in the exercise sessions you will work more with the details and the assistants have a lot of hands-on experience and information about how you efficiently approach and solving it so with this the lecture is finished and we will have the next meeting over zoom at 12 o'clock today so meet you there bye bye